Welcome back to Switch Direct. Today we're continuing with our What Is series with the game Moonlighter. What is Moonlighter? Well, you're about to find out. It's an action RPG where a roguelike where you're a shopkeeper, which is quite a bit different than your typical roguelike, except what we'll find is that the shopkeeping is just a new form of progression that makes it a little bit more interesting than your typical uh, progression system. And when I say typical, I mean, um, for comparison's sake, we could say um, um, Rogue Legacy, where at the end of each run, you just spend your, your points. Or even, um, uh, didn't mean to actually start the shop there. Um, or even uh, Morsha where you're just spending your currency after each run. In this one, um, what we're gonna be doing, uh, and I'm gonna clear up my inventory here first. What we're gonna be doing here is, uh, inventory is a huge part of this game, as you'll, as you'll see. So you will take that back. We'll put these away. And we'll take that with. Um, what I was saying is, um, uh, what you'll find is that it's very similar because we're going to still be progressing our character through selling some, you know, taking their loot from our run, um, getting money, and then using it to buy upgrades. Uh, the upgrades, we can go over those now, are you get different shop owners, so you can get... Um, where you can make your new weapons. Uh, when you make your new weapons, it's you're paying a cost and materials. Um, this is where you can get potions and enhancements. The enchantments so far are just stat bonuses to the existing gear you have. Again, materials and money to, in order to do it. Uh, this guy, he's selling the same stuff you do, what you find in the dungeon, but if you want one particular thing in order to help fill out what you're trying to build over here then this is useful there next upgrade I don't have yet is um, for objects that make your place look better so you you sell more um, the other stuff to upgrade is your shop itself you can get bigger sizes so you can sell more items at once and better different things inside of it like beds storage um, get tips by having a better register um, sale boxes Controls are simple. You have A for attack, um, ZL for dodging, B for blocking if you have the shield, um, R and L to switch, switch uh, weapons. Right now I have a bow as my secondary, um, X for inventory, and ZR for potions. For the dungeons, it's um, you go into whatever one you have, the highest one you have unlocked, and then uh, you have multiple levels. Each level will have some random corridors to go through, uh, left, right, up, and down, sort of Zelda-like in the way it's presented and looks. And then you have a boss at the end um, that gets progressively harder each level. Uh, and what you're really going to want to do here to get you know, as much progression as possible as you want to fill up your bag with the most valuable things and then leave before you, you die. Because if you die, everything in your backpack is gone. So, uh, I'm still relatively, uh, you know, early on in this game. So, uh, I'm in the first set of dungeons, which is the, the Golem dungeons. But the first level is pretty trivial already. Uh, another important part of this is the inventory management. It's not just that you have only so many slots, but there's these weird curses. So these ones make it so the item can only be on the left and the right. Um, other ones will make it so it destroys an item at the end. Um, other ones will remove those curses, uh, and more still will make it so they're invisible until you get back to town so you don't even know what it is. 
excess inventory that's not worth much, you can sell for a really low amount too. Less than you would be able to make with um, selling it in the shop. So you're gonna wanna take advantage of that when you you know progress a little bit and you have to pick up some of these stuff that is just not as worth as much. The, the prices start to scale up pretty quickly, so. The, even within this first level, I can get items that sell either only for a few gold or for hundreds. So, I mean, it could be really worth it just to clear out that inventory space. Um, this is meaning I'm right before the first boss. It's supposed to heal you up. I have extra health, that little yellow health, because I have a nice bed, and the nice bed gives me a boost when I sleep in it. First boss is pretty trivial. Um, especially with the first upgrade of weapon, you know, I only had to uh, dodge once and I could finish him off, but you'll see everything scales up pretty quickly here. Graphics in this game are beautiful. Love the, the pixel art style. Healing items in this, you're only limited by what you're willing to make and um, carry. So you can just be stacked full if you really wanted to try and do a um, progression. So here we have an instance where this will destroy an item below. What I'm not sure about is if it wraps around. But I also have one of these anti-curse ones. Put that down. Now this is no longer a curse. Now I can stack it with that. Um, likewise, I think what we'll do is we'll Move that there. Move that there. Uncurse that. Then I can stack that. Uh, to be honest, I find the inventory system having to, to manage with all that it, it can be kind of annoying. It detracts from the gameplay. I'd rather be fighting or managing the shop some way. Um, than just moving items around in an inventory screen. I'm hoping that uh, as it progresses, I'll be able to carry more stuff. Here's ones where you just don't know what it is. Um, that's another destroy one. I'm just going to auto sell these with the rear there. And here we are to boss two. Uh, I'm kind of rushing past exploring all the rooms because I've done these levels a couple of times now and I already know that the value of this stuff isn't worth much. And as you can see, my inventory is already full. So I'm better off just getting to the next area. See now already the second version boss has quite a bit more health, so isn't just dying right away has a few more moves. Dodging seems to be the key to a lot of this. Still not too challenging. Um, these are worth it quite a bit on the ground, so I'm gonna sell some stuff that isn't. Uh, these are worth very little. Same with those. And these. And these. And while I'm doing it, might as well just clear out some of those other ones. On to level three. If you're getting close to dying or you think you might not be able to make it through a room, you're going to want to escape with the pendant. It costs you some money, but you will keep, you won't lose all your inventory in your bag, which is hugely important um, and you're just really wasting your time if you, if you don't do that and when I say bag um, let me show you here so you see the top row oh it looks like we get something new okay 
So the top row right here, this is what you'd keep regardless. So if you have some expensive items and you're not sure if you're gonna die, it'd be better to move those up. I don't know what that is, so it's kind of a risk, but uh, let's just move these. While these have a clear theme, the full level, they do have um, a variety on the enemies and the graphics for the dungeons for each of the levels. The different major dungeons, though, have completely different biomes. Now, see, this is a destroy one, which is annoying, but... What we'll do here is that there. And this will destroy it at the end. So I can just do this now and get rid of that. We can... Uh, Now, let's sell something else cheap. This is the part that I'm not too keen on. I'd rather just, you know, basically be able to hold infinite stuff and then them to balance the game around, um, you know, you being able to do that so you don't, they don't have to give you as much. Um, but oddly, some of those, when you hit like A, it starts splitting into one and three. I can't just, I have to do the quick move to move it all. It's kind of annoying. If you like roguelikes, um, this is definitely fun. The action is pretty simplistic. Um, it's not as in depth of like an. Uh, action game as like say dead cells but it's enough to you know keep you on your toes um, those guys they think they knocked something out of my inventory my extra uh, health potions yeah Okay, this is a new one for me. Um, interesting. So, that looks like I can use that to upgrade. Now, these are not worth a lot, but I'm wondering if I can do that. If it breaks, seems to be hits. Um, I think what we're going to want to do is we'll move those over. Move those over. Combine those. Move that over. that over that now do we have any other that I think those books are worth more Understanding this right, I think that's going to add a lot more value. And let's let's 
sell these. I want my potions. Okay, so yeah, this is something I just had unlocked earlier as I was explaining. Um, this lets me go right back to where I was at, whereas this is just going to take me back to town. That's nice for um, actually trying to complete these dungeons. I may take it up on that, because I mean, I'm. Looks like I don't have too much money, you know, 11,000. So, um. In that. But I think that I will take it up on that because I have a lot of interesting things. And I want to see if I can complete the, you know, dungeon further. Sort of Zelda-like action, you know, I mean, top-down. If you're top-down action, you're going to be compared to it, especially with the way that sword swings. It's just like it. You don't get experience or level-ups or anything like that in this game, or extra hearts. All of the health and everything is tied to your equipment that you have. So... Um, getting on top of upgrading everything is important. I'm just going to dump everything to do the selling later. Yeah, so that gave me a, quite a bit more of those. Those are expensive items, so that's great. You can also get pets. Um, the one I have right now, it just picks up items for me and does small damage to things. Um, you get an egg, random chance from different uh, monsters that you fight. And you it, once you go to town, it'll automatically put them in a crowd pen. And after a few days, then you'll be able to select them as a choice. They can't die or take damage, so you don't have to worry about that. That's interesting. I don't know why I just fell. Okay. You'll find each of the little places like this in um, the middle of these dungeons and sort of journals of previous people who had gone there. The story is pretty basic. There were dungeons and merchants and... Too many heroes died in the dungeons, so now you as a merchant have to go into the dungeons so that uh, you can get loot to sell. It's still cute though. Looks like everyone comes back. I suppose I could, you could do this to farm the last level of a dungeon now that chest was uh, empty so I'm not sure if that will uh, reappear or not but I guess we'll see with this one too because I had opened this one previously so maybe not fully farm it only farm the uh, enemies See though, yeah. So I guess I guess spending that money, if you if you were getting things from just the monsters, this is on the. Um, they say hard difficulty, it's their default difficulty. 
You can go to normal, which is very easy. <clears throat> or a very hard. Let's uh, do this. Those are good. Ooh, I know. Since these ones can break and they're worth a decent amount, we'll send them back home. Let's put these on the bottom. It doesn't do anything. Curses on the ones that break. Hoping that uh, if they make a moonlight or two, they, they make this part a little bit more. I don't know. Less important. Uh, more involved with the shop, which we will see uh, next after we do this uh, dungeon here. Sometimes it's you have to go multiple uh, screens from the healing pool, but that's still nice too because I can just re heal myself for free. Here we go, big boss. This is where it's nice to have that uh, portal to go back earlier. I don't know yet if I'm going to be able to beat him. This is my first time with this guy, so I don't know his patterns yet. Pretty good. You gotta be careful what I say though. Seems about right for the progression. I got all the equipment you can get for the uh, first tier. I could have enchanted my weapon to be even stronger as well. Um, so I could have been more powerful, but... I'm not sure what that is. Yeah. 
And here we go. We get some loots. I think we're gonna wanna sell a bunch of this stuff, but let me, oh, oh no. Okay. Phew. This, can I equip? Now I'm not 100% sure I can um, make it back and loot everything, so I'm going to actually make sure that, uh, This is not worth much. And here we go. Anything else? Looks like I got it all. The ring gave me uh, some health. Wonder if this he can do anything. Boom. First dungeon. Now for the other part of the progression in, or the main progression part of this. So this is like the other half of the game, which is the uh, shopkeeping part of it. Oh, first we get a little cutscene since we beat that, that dungeon. So it looks like you have to beat all four of those other major dungeons and then you can unlock the fifth dungeon. And I'm sure I'm gonna need to get all the loot from each one in order to be strong enough. Little father figure, help you figure everything out. And there we go, dungeon two unlocked. Now for the shopkeeping part. So you have these different tables and a sale box. And um, sale box, you can put a bunch of items in, but they have a significantly reduced price. So you're, most, you're always better off using this unless you're just trying to unload a whole bunch of things. The next part is you have to come up with a price. So something like this I've never sold before. It has zero price on it. I can look in my journal though and I can see um, what I've sold things for and people's reactions to it and a general cutoff line. So everything above this line should at least be 275 and below will probably be less than 275, but there's variance. Um, you can see the different expressions, like on this one, there's a, you know, gold eyes. So I sold it at 80, which was too cheap. They were like, that's a great deal. 100 seemed to be about, okay, that's decent. And I could probably inch it up to I can't go up to 120 because they say, you know, with the, the weird upset face, it's like, no, not going to buy it at all. So the sort of annoyed face, I could sell for 110. Um, but selling it at that happy face seems to do good. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to make my store more popular if I keep people happy. So I try and get to that place. And if I find an item, is you know, get to there, then I'm great. So... With this, okay, uh, we've never sold this. We sold we sold the one above for twelve hundred for really cheap, or they thought that was really cheap. So I'm going to, and we've sold this one, which is below it for fifteen hundred. Uh, so I'm going to sell this guy. We'll we'll start at seventeen hundred. And if they don't like it, that's that's okay.
This one's even higher. Poem histories, one, two, and three. That's close to 3,000. Let's get it to like 2,900. See how that does. We'll put that similar. Something like that. Column designs, we'll do. And I could sell all those at once, but I want to sell them one at a time just so I can kind of see what they're going to go for. Um, ones like this, I already know what it is, so I can just move them all over. This one, I think I understand. Yeah, no, that's about right. Um, we got that. And now we have a ton of other inventory. I'm just going to put these, keep those for enchantments. Yep, little note saying basically the core concept of the game. So I'm going to sleep. And then we'll start the new day and be selling stuff. Um, I could have just set up everything in the, the morning too. I didn't need to do it at night. Um, and I open my shop for sale. A bunch of people come in. Um, you have to actually be here ready to sell it to them when they pick it up. You have to pay a little bit of attention too because there can be burglars. If you're not up here when they try and buy it, then they'll just walk away with a really cheap price. So. This was just a tad too high. That one was definitely too high. So we're gonna go down to that. See if that sells. And we're filled the other slot. Um, other symbols you can see on there, there was a guy that had a weapon symbol over his head. So if I had uh, weapons. That guy was trying to steal. So I had to be rough and tumble with him. I don't even have any weapons or armor to sell, really. I mean, I've made some, but so far I've found that you don't really get much of a, you know, much of your money back. If uh, oops, I need to actually put a price on that. What is this? Let's put like. Let's only sell one. No, let's put like two thousand. Those little mustache top hat guys, they'll over overpay or they'll they'll buy something that's overpriced. I'm not sure how you can like trick them into getting something unless you saw them coming in then immediately remove all your items and then uh, overprice something. Let's see. Oh see that was wait it was too cheap. We'll try like twenty five hundred. stuff out there. Mm. 
That's a new item. Let's try 2500 as well. You got a real, I mean, the, the loot from beating this final boss is just great compared to not beating that dungeon, though. Like, I was redoing that dungeon just trying to collect everything, and I think that was a mistake. Just going straight for that end boss earlier would have been much more profitable, and it's, it wasn't too, it wasn't too challenging. Granted, my gear made it, uh, easier on me, so you could argue I had to do that first just to get to this place, but, okay, let's check this, see, that was too cheap, let's, um, bump this up to 400. I suppose if I was really lazy, I could try and sell this all in the sale box and just go quickly, but I want to get the most for my money on this. You can see that um, it's getting darker as well. That's actually the, you know, you're running out of um, time for the day. Which, uh, oops. Which is fine. Yeah, that was a good price. Um, let's see this. That seemed to be a good price. Um, which is fine. I mean, you'll just, I'll just, you know, sleep it off and start again. another one. Let's, let's put this down to there. They say if you oversell things for, you know, have too many of the same item too, you're going to have to reduce the price because uh, supply and demand. I haven't really seen that, but a run without going to the boss, you're probably not going to be spending this much time selling. I could probably fill up all my shelves at, at once with a different run. Okay, so that was the end of that day. We had the one burglary attempt, but I stopped it, so that's good. Let's lower this guy's price. Oops. Let's move that over. Let's get some more items. Let's sleep. some more. Start again. This should clear out pretty quickly. You can see it, it, the sailing goes a little bit faster once you've figured out some prices. Um, people are generally pretty quick about coming and going. Um, this guy's causing me problems. Cool character designs for some of this.
hopefully I'll be able to have some armor that looks like that uh, guy that just walked out of there. So, I mean, watching this, you can see that it's so much more involved for your in-between dungeons. Right? Doing this, do this shop, managing it, um, doing the sell price, it's, it's not a complicated work. You're not doing you know, real books of a real business, but um, it's more interesting, too, than your typical... Uh, here's a menu of possible upgrades. Do you have enough? Yes or no? By the next good upgrade, then you're done. I mean, you could simplify it to that by saying, oh, that's what you're going to end up doing. It's just buying, you know, the bliss from it. But they add these extra steps and flair that makes it fun. You get to see your shop progress and grow. And there's a lot of upgrades I can do, especially with all this new money. Wish I could make this much money in a day. In real life. That little urn thing, I guess, gets me tips on my stuff, too. I'll lower this a little bit. Now that 2,000 doesn't even mean anything anymore. Now instead of just leaving these dungeons, I think I'm just going to be spending that cash just to go back. Come on. That's two items. This actually kind of reminds me of... um. Ilona as well. If you've ever played that, that's an awesome little um, Japanese roguelike made by a single developer. You can have your own shops in it too, but you hire people to do this part for you. You just come back a couple days later. Let's see if there's something saying the popularity. Neutral popularity. Well, that seems to be fine. The pricing. High popularity. When uh, my this is the first upgrade to the shop. My first shop had only the the top table of four spots and no sale box. All right. Well, I don't want to waste uh anyone's time by making them sit there and watch these guys do nothing for a little bit more. I'm closing up shop. We're going to go look at some upgrades. Um, actually, I think I have to fall I have to be it during the day for in order to get a new owner. I'll show you what that's like. Upgrading stuff. Um, it looks to be that basically there's four different tiers. Each tier you need the items from the dungeon you can go to in order to do the upgrades. Um, I've starred these things so that as I get the um, items, they'll have a star on them. So I won't just sell them. I'll keep them for actually doing the development. Um, Investment in the town. I definitely have the cash for this, so I'm going to do that. I believe that he's going to make it so that I can have some uh, uh, ornaments or other interesting things for my shop to give me better prices. So we'll check that out. Ah, 
Yeah, see. That seems to be the most worthwhile. have so many actual um, decorations. Yeah. That's why I just didn't buy all of those, because I think that I have to have an upgraded shop to be able to uh, um, buy more of those. Which I can do. Boom. <laughs> Each time he says that. Very nice. So, uh, with this, um, it looks like they're saying that um, people can request things, too. And with that, looks like it's going to make it so those are burglary proof. So, if I put, like, um, I have some really high value items, I can put them in there. I mean, so far it seems like, you know, for burglars, it's not been a problem I just roll after them and I get it so I'm not too concerned about that but anyways that's uh, Moonlighter it's on sale now it's a great game uh, if you like this type of action and you uh, like uh, the little shop management thing check it out it's pretty cheap um, fun to play if you like this content like to see more like it sure to like share and subscribe we'll catch you next time